Yes. Hello. Let me turn on captions. So today we're going to do assignment assignment five, which is one of the last few tasks. Okay, so if you have a chance, uh, take a look at Canvas. We'll have a minute before we start. We are going to work on GUI today, which is pretty fun. And I'll show you some resources you can use to make interface for your application. Um, this is usually the, the fun part of programming. You get to make buttons and things. And then um, also, we will use an IDE so you can open up Tawny. Okay. So download or access assignment five. Okay, so for today, we're gonna use two libraries. I wanna show you the difference between them. Um, and then I want to introduce to you various resources that you can use. Um, these are the common libraries that you see in Python. You don't have to use these specific ones. There are other options. So according to your notes, um, except for a Kiwi link, everything else should be okay. So if you go to page 16, um, it starts talking about TK Inter. Right, a lot of students call this tkinter, but it's tkinter. This comes with your Python package. Uh, you can, you don't have to download anything extra if you use tkinter. There's some limitation with it though, um, and there's specific things that you need when you use it. So a lot of the Python developer they prefer to use tkinter because it comes with the Python package where you know, there's no additional components, um, but it's be best if you refer to the documentation and it would look like this. So it walks you through basically on how to work with the module, which is another library file. Um, you have to import it in, okay. Hi, how are you doing? Come on in. Welcome back. Hello. Go ahead and log on to the computer. So this is the documentation for TK Enter. We are going to do that for our assignment five, right? We don't have to download anything like what I said before. Um, another option that you can use is Qt, right? Qt is available in a lot of languages, C++, Python, um, and Qt is often used for 3D development, um, especially in gaming. So if you want to get into the gaming industry um, to write game applications that have really high graphics, Qt is the library to use. Now, I believe that it, this one is not free. Um, there is some free resources from them, but if you use additional tools from Qt and it comes with an IDE, um, then you probably have to pay for the license, okay? So now for the, it, it used a component called PySide and PySide and PyQt. Some of it is free, like I said. Um, there are different version. The link that I provide here is for Qt5 for Python. So you would see PyQt5. And then there's some tutorial. Now, if you do consider downloading Qt, I just wanna let you know that it is very um, resource heavy. Um, when you download this, the package is pretty large. That means that you will require a lot of hard drive or storage space. 
So if you don't have a lot of space, just make sure that you read the requirements first before you download and install. And it does come with an IDE with the package. Um, and they really, you know, promote this and they make it really easy. There's some example that you can use. So it's going to be similar to other package. Okay. Uh, let me see. And then you have um, the 2D Pi game. This is used for like, you know, 8-bit, 16-bit game like. So if you want to build games, Pi game is very easy. You can do this in Python. There are really good examples, simple, basic example that you can use to make simple games. So after this class, if you wanted to do this for fun, you can use the API, which is an, uh, an application interface that you can program and be able to adapt to your existing um, Python program so you can build out your game, okay? So Pygame is also fun to use. Um, and then there is Kivi. Kivi also is being used in game development and also other application. It can handle some graphics. Um, it is very business friendly. As you can see from the website, it is open source. Now, open source, make sure that you look at the license because sometimes if you monetize from your application and you use open source, uh, you need to take a look at the requirement, right? Making sure that um, it is truly open source where you can use, but when you monetize, you have to probably contribute or donate or pay into it. So there's some sponsorship, as you can see, when they monetize that, right? Um, you can also just donate to them to really keep the community going. So this is also another good one to use. It is cross-platform. Um, so there are many different types of toolkits and frameworks that you can implement to be able to have an interface for your application for whether you wanted to build it for mobile or a native application for system installation. Now, Python is cross-platform. It's often used for web application, uh, but if you are specific to a certain operating system like iOS, iOS uses C Sharp. Um, and so, you would need to be able to, um, I'm sorry, not C-sharp. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh, C-sharp is for Windows. Um, but you want to be able to write the proper language for the proper operating system. Okay, so Python can be used for web applications and native applications across. All right, so we are going to work on Unit 5 assignment. And I want you to check out the notes. The notes give you some details on how to create graphical user interface. So one of the first thing, um, this class is not really addressing GUI design specifically. This is only gonna be for you to see how to program components on GUI, but it's always a good practice to consider your user. Um, in For English speaking country, we, lead, we read from left to right, so when you develop your program, consider where the people eyes are gonna be drawn. So as you know that in the past, you would see that Windows application, a lot of the things are on the bottom. So what we want to consider is the, a good practice in how we interface with the user is making sure that things are very clear. It is easy to see, consider people who, who can't see all colors in the color spectrum, and also make it where it is um, for a specific aim, right? Like the larger population, if they read English, we want to go from left to right, top down. So your start buttons or your menu options should be on the left instead of the right. If you are targeting populations that um, speak other languages or read other languages like Chinese, Japanese, things like that, consider how they read the language and how they see objects on screen. And that's really important, right? So for those of you who go into UI and UX design, you wanna have classes that's really gonna address that. And I took one of those classes. So um, so to start, we're gonna open up our Tawny, okay? So just search for Tawny. This is gonna be the IDE that we're gonna use, okay? And for part A, we are going to start with TK Enter. You don't have to install anything. Um, 
in the case that if your system doesn't find it, it should come with the Python package. But if it doesn't find it, you can also download and install TK Enter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and program in my part A exercise. So what you will have at the top is you are going to have an import statement. This simply tells the program that we are, or tells the interpreter that we are using the library. Like what we've done before, when we use a module, we simply import it and we want to label it. So we wanna give it a name. So what that does is the system is gonna use this identifier to find the library file. And within that, there's different components, okay? Another way that you can import, if you're not sure the specific, you can say from TK enter import and you use a wildcard. I comment that out because I don't really think that we need it, but if you, you can do one or the other, this is the best way, okay? But if you want to use specific or if you're not sure, you can also put the wildcard as an asterisk. So in the next step, what we're gonna do is we are going to create a new window. So anytime that you are making an interface, just think of it like you're drawing, right? You have to have a piece of paper or canvas and you need to have that layout so that way you can start adding pictures and images and things to it. So what we need in, in a user interface using TK Enter is we need a window, right? Like, you know how when you, you click a, a button and it pops up a window, that's what we're gonna need. So that's, this is gonna be like our, our little canvas that we're gonna use and we're gonna add things to it. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create an object and we talked about this yesterday about class objects. And this object is gonna be part of it's gonna use the TK, which is the library, and it's gonna use the TK class in that library, okay? So that's what we're gonna use. Okay, and I did screenshot it on the assignment five, so if you can't see it on the screen, you can also look at your document. So once you create an object, we are gonna configure that window, that object, okay? And here is where you would, create the actual physical size that you would show on screen. And this we are gonna use 400 by 400. So it's gonna be square. And this is really depends on how large or small you want your window, right? We have to consider that the user screen might not be very large. So you don't want it to be excessively large, but you also don't want it to be too small where they cannot see the text or they have to scroll in order to see the rest of your window. So right now for the example, we are gonna use 400 by 400. Okay, so this is gonna be the size, okay. Now, since we have the window, we're gonna start adding widget, which is the component that's gonna go onto that window. So one of the first thing that we can do is we're gonna add a label. And this label simply is a text that's gonna show like welcome friends or hello friends. So if you want to make this for your application, let's say that you wanna say, welcome to my cool game, right? That's gonna be the label that's gonna go onto the window. So the window is gonna pop up and it's gonna have this text. So here, for my widget, I need to make sure that it has a container, right? So it is another object. And this object is gonna use the library, which is TK enter this file. And it's gonna use the class called label, okay? Now, what we want is we want to tie it back to our window. So we want to, to pass the parameter window and the text, Whatever that we want to display, we would put that into the text, right? Variable, and that needs to be in string. Okay, so single or double quotation mark there. Now, whenever you make a widget for TK Enter, you have to pack it. 
So think of it like you create it and you prep it, right? You create it, but in order for it to be shown, you have to use the path function, okay? So you would use the object and the method. And we talked about this yesterday when we talked about OOP. So it's gonna execute this, it's gonna package it for the window. So then it's gonna show, it's gonna show the text on the window. If you don't do this, it will not show, okay? So anytime that you add individual widget, you're gonna pack it when you're using TK Enter, okay? Now, every, every library uses different function. So make sure that we look at the documentation when we're using the library. For TK Enter, we're using the pack function. So when you are making graphical user interface, all the components that goes onto what you see on screen, right? Those are gonna be widgets. But anytime that you have some form of actions or interaction, it's gonna be considered as a system event. So for example, when I'm using my mouse to scroll, that's an event. When I'm using my mouse to click the X to close my window, that's an event. So what happens is we have to tell the system that what kind of event that it needs to listen to, okay? So the computer has to see the individual widget as an event. So that way you, the user can interact with it because it has to translate that action into instructions on the hardware level, like your monitor, your mouse, your keyboard. So that way when you use those components, it's able to understand what you're trying to do, like press a button, click a mouse, right? Side, scroll, right? Slide, things like that. So in this case, what we have is we have a label with text and we add that to our widget. What we're gonna do next is we are going to use the label and we want to make it into a specific color and size, okay? So here we are going to create a label event. And therefore, anytime that you create anything in your interface, you are gonna make an object, right? So we have a, a, a label right here. Again, we're gonna use the label class in the library for this object. And for this object, we want to configure it. We want to put hello friends again, right? This label is for the window top, right? The title of your window. This is gonna be a label inside that. And for the background and the foreground, so FG here stands for foreground and BG stands for background, okay? So the background is gonna be black and the font is gonna be white. The nice thing about this particular library is you can simply use color in plain text like this, red, blue, green, right? So you don't have to stick with black and white. I just want to show you, you can do this. Now, when you use color, okay, for GUI, consider like the contrast because there are people with accessibility issues. So when you're using background is black and you're using blue font, it's really hard to see, right? If you ever take website design classes, um, they talk about, you know, the use of color or if you take art classes, it's the same concept, right? So wanna make sure that it has enough contrast so that way people can see the font on the background. I've seen a lot of website with red background and black font, it hurts people's eyes, right? When I look at it for a long time, my eyes hurt. So you want to consider using something that is more user-friendly. Okay, so here we're gonna do black and white. And again, we're gonna pack it, okay? So let me close this. Then after that, we're gonna add a button, okay? So whenever that you add a widget, you wanna make an object. 
and we're using the library. And we are going to use the button class. So whatever label that goes on your button, Nicole, I screenshot it on the document too, so you can see it there as well, okay, if you need. Um, so the button simply say, click me, right? But if you have a button for start, stop, finish, um, sometimes you would have a button, um, you know, maybe, you know, win $5,000 or something like that for a game. Um, you can put that there. So the 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 text that's going to go on top of the button, this is going to be click me. And this is going to be the size. Okay, so we want 25 by 5, fairly a small button. And then also the background, the background is going to be white and the foreground is going to be black. So this is going to be, the font is going to be black on the white. Most of the buttons you see, they're usually gray. Um, there are some library that you can use system-based type of button that's very close to your operating system, okay? And as you finish that, you would pack the button, okay? So notice that I have another widget. I have the, the button pack here, okay? So as you go through, now, some people, they would write all of the configuration and then they would do all the pack at the end. I like to do it as soon as I finish the widget so I don't forget, okay? Um, it really depends on your preference. Some developer, they would write like each of the widget and then they would pack it at the end. So you would have, you know, button pack, label pack, all of that at the end, that's fine. Um, so ultimately, your interpreter is going to go line by line. And so I want it to pack each of the component as it built, okay? And then the last thing that you cannot forget, remember that we have this window object, right? Everything goes on top of a window. That's like the canvas of your painting and you adding color and picture and all of these things onto this window. So what we want at the end is we want to make this window as part of your main loop. So main has to see the window, right? So it's gonna use that window to be able to build out the widget, the components of your interface, okay? So when you build your interface, think about what's in the background and then layer everything on top, okay? Any question? Now, I'm going to tell you that this button, right? We make a button, but when you click it, it doesn't do anything, right? In order for this button to work, you have to write a function, okay? So you would say, you know, for the, and I'll, I will show you how listening event would work. So when you say click me, even if the user click it, it does nothing, okay? So in order for the button to work, for example, my button, um, when you click it, it opens another window. So it needs to call the next window, right? So the function has to call the next window, like window two. So that will be another object. And then on that, you would have like a picture or something like that from Costa Rica, okay? So you can use some of this very basic. We're gonna do two libraries today. So you can see how that works. And then you can implement this for your project. It's pretty fun, right? All right, so once you run this, it's gonna pop up. So here's my window, right? Here's my hello friends. This is from this part right here, right? This hello friends is right here. And then for my label, this is a label, okay? This is the black and white one. This is this part for here. And then here's my button. So I can size this down if I wanted to make it smaller, right? Normally you would see button that fits just the text, but you don't want it too small where it cuts off the text or it's hard to see. Now we're not doing anything fancy with the button. Sometime that, you know, you can make it a more artistic where you have to tell it like, you know, you want not just a certain size, but you want it like embossed. Um, it would have a shadow, so it shows like a, a, a 3D effect. So it really depends on how much you want to put into your interface, okay? 
All right, any question? Okay. So that is part A of our assignment. So we did part A here. And what I did was I put down specific explanation. Okay. So one of the things that I did not mention earlier is you need to always have some kind of frame. Okay. And this is going to control the region and put it into a rectangular area so that way it will pad the widget. You will see later on when we do like um, we're adding images. Okay. So you have to make sure that it's framed. And so the screenshot for my for my code, I put that there. So if you don't, you couldn't type everything when I was showing it earlier, make sure you open up the document. You see that there. Okay. Okay. At the end, we always want to close it out with the, the main component. Okay. So for the next part, what we're going to do is we are going to um, make an interface that's going to count up every second, like a clock. Okay, so it's going to count up every second. So let's say that you make a timer for your game. Uh, let's say you do like a little math game for your tutoring session. Uh, you can have it count up to like 60 seconds and then stop, right? And this is what you see with like quizzes online, games online, um, things like that. Okay, all right. So I also have a screenshot there. What we're gonna do is we are going to, let me open it up. Here's my part B. We again are gonna use TK Enter. So we are going to import in TK Enter as TK. So we're gonna bring in the library or the module. And for the clock, this one, we are going to have a counter. Okay, and we're gonna start it at zero. <clears throat> and so with that, we are going to nest two function. The first function, we're going to use the counter label. And within that, we are going to, this is the action. So this is for the label and this is for the actual count, right? So we are gonna have the count function or method we're gonna globalize the counter. So when you're using the keyword global, that makes this counter accessible inside and outside. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Come on in. You can log into the computer. We just started, we're on exercise B. So when you use the counter, remember that we're going one second at the time. So we are using a compound operator. It is itself added one. So it's going to increment one by one. Okay, so it's going to go, right? One second, two second, three second, and so on. Then we are going to configure the value, remember that the system see everything as number. In order to display the number, you have to convert it back into text, which is string. Okay, so if 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 you want the user to see one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, you have to take the number, the value, and convert it to text. So that way it would show one, two, three, four, five, because text is an actual different value than the real number. Then, so now, because in order to display text, we need to tie it to a label, right? Earlier, you saw what a label looked like. We cannot just display numbers in thin air, right? We have to put it onto something when we're making a graphical user interface. So here, I need to make it in, I, I add it on top of a label. And then, so when it counts each of the second, it shows on there. And here I'm using the after method. So it's going to be after 1000 and it's going to start count. Okay. 
So this is just the function that we're going to use for counting the second. Now, by practice, a lot of people use root as an object name. You don't have to use that, right? You can call it anything you want. But, you know, a lot of the people in the industry, they when they use TK Enter, if you look at the example everywhere, you're going to see that it's going to say root. So here I'm creating an object. Okay. So whenever you start with graphical user interface, you want to be able to create object for every component that you're going to add. So I'm going to make a root object. And this is a TK object. So it uses the library and the class inside that library called TK. This has already been written for you. So we're going to bring in that class for this object. And through that, we're going to be able to access the function like title. So using that, it's going to add the title and the, our title is going to be calling counting seconds. So if you want to count days, you're going to say counting days until, you know, the end of the year, you know, like new year countdown type of stuff, right? You can also subtract instead of add seconds. That's really up to you on how you want to design. But in this one, we're going to count up every second. Then after that, we're going to add the label to the root, right? Remember, we make the object and we're going to add the label to the object. So over here, we're going to use label and it's going to be using label class from the TK library, TK enter. And we're going to have a foreground green. Okay, that's going to be our font. And so when I'm, whenever I make a label, I need to pack it, right? Because it's a widget. So we learned in the first exercise that we need to pack the label. And after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this function. So I'm gonna call it for the label. So you are gonna call the function, which you define up here, and you're gonna pass label, which we define here. Right, so what it's gonna do is gonna use that and it's gonna count, okay? Then I'm gonna make a button so that way I can stop it, right? No point, because you want the user to have some form of action. That's the whole point in UI or UX design, okay? So the graphical user interface, GUI is really designed to interface with the user. So here we're gonna make a button. So we have a button object. It's going to use the button class from the library. They already wrote the class for you. We're going to add that button to our root object, right? Something that we need to lay it on. And we're going to label the button called stop. And then it's going to be the width of our button is 25. This is the size. Now the command to destroy is to get rid of it, right? To close, to stop. So we're, we're gonna use an actual system command and this is gonna be root.destroy. After we make the button, we're gonna pack it. So button.pack. And since you make the root, you gotta make sure that you finish it up with the main loop. Okay, so main gotta call it. Okay. Just like before, always end with your whatever that the object that you created first to lay everything on. You're gonna you're gonna use main loop function to finish that up. Okay, and this is specifically for TK Enter library. And in this one, we are gonna make a countdown or a count up, right? A count up interface. Oops, sorry, I cover you guys up. Let me drag it. Okay, see how it's counting up? I'm gonna close it so some of you are still copying the code. And it's also on your assignment uh, page so you can find the code there as well. So once you finish this, right, uh, you can run it and it should pop up a little count. Right? I know it's not the most beautiful thing Right, we're still gonna need to finesse it and, and play with it, but this is just a simple example for you to see. 
Okay. Now, ideally, we would add a button to a window that has text box and all of that other good stuff to make it look nicer and cleaner. But I want to show you that you can do this with a count up clock. Any questions? See it. I think it's giving me a warning. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for exercise B and then exercise A, if you download the assignment, you if you want to code it, you can see the screenshot there and just follow the screenshot. I'll put up the video in case you need to go back and look at it again. So every summer I see Google hire UX, UI uh, people. Um, they also hire psychology people to really study how the, the, the user really feel about interfacing certain things like, you know, their mobile apps, uh, maps, stuff like that. So UX, UI design goes beyond programming, bless you. It's really about, you know, how, you know, how clean, how easy to use. So if you make something that's very hard to use, the learning curve on that's going to be challenging. People won't be able to, to access it, right? And we talked about design. Think about how you read certain language. We go from left to right, top down. So everything start from the left and then go top down. If you use uh, other languages, right? Think about how they read, right? If it's right to left, then you are going to start from right and go left. Okay, so depending on the the application. So now some applications are specifically for, you know, certain mobile devices. Um, so they have to consider like the hardware limitations, um, how the screen is laid out. So the size of the screen and everything should be taken into consideration as well. Any question? That's not bad, right? Pretty fun. Okay, next one. Okay, so screenshot is there. For part C, what we're gonna do is we are going to make an image, okay? And here, what I need for you to do is you need to find a GIF. A lot of people use animated GIF, right? Um, sometimes animated GIF doesn't work because if it is a very, um, if it has really high rated frame, it might not be able to interpret well. So consider that, right? Um, for your application, a lot of the GIF that you see online might be animated, but it's best to use still ones, right? Things that don't move, uh, but you can use animated GIF. I, I think I have a fix for it too. So, all right. So in part C, what we're gonna do is we are gonna add an image. Usually we would add like the company's logo, um, so for TK Enter, it would work with GIF or GIF. PNG works well. JPEG does not, right? So this particular library supports specific image file. If you have JPEG and other things, you might want to consider using the next library we're going to go over, which is GUI Zero. Okay, there are certain library that support certain image files. So, um. I haven't read the updated documentation, but I think that's what it would be. So here's part C. So before we start part C, you can open up your Google, okay? And what you want to do is you can uh, search for images, but you want to have a .gif, right? And make sure that it's like, you know, not infected by virus, not one of those ones that, you know, it's going to create ads. So we would pick the ones that we want. We can right click it and then save uh, image as. And make sure that it is in the same folder as your Python script. Okay. 
So if, if you've been saving your Python file in your USB drive, put your GIF on your USB drive in the same folder. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, it's going to give you an error. So find one that works. Okay. And then if it doesn't work, find another one because some, some GIF doesn't work well with, with the library. So, you know, you just pick one that you like. If you like, uh, I don't know, butterflies, then find butterfly within GIF, whatever. Whatever you like to add, okay? So what I have is I have, um, I have a logo called PC, right? It is an animated GIF, okay, like this. And I just make sure that it's in the same folder as my script. So now let we let's write it. So when you save your file, give it a name that's it's easy to use, right? I have um let me put this. So first I'm gonna have an import statement. I'm using TK library just like before. I'm gonna make a root object. This is where I'm gonna lay everything on top, like my picture, okay? And um, I'm, it is using TK library and it is part of TK class. So this is a class object. Then I want to put my logo, you can put pick, right? Whatever you want to name this object. So here I name it logo. And because it is an image, you have to make sure that it uses this function from the library called photo image. And it has to be typed like this. Okay. So it's using this class from the library and we're gonna tell it the file of it is. So whatever your picture that you save, the name of it has to be exactly matching. So mine is called PC, right? Make sure that it is the right extension, so .gif. Okay, you can also use PNG. Now, let's say that you took a bunch of pictures from Costa Rica and you wanna use TK Enter. The best, you can convert your JPEG into PNG using an application, or you can also use screenshot, right? A lot of the screenshot, like in Windows system, if you open the image, if you snip, right? If I use the snipping functionality, it actually allows you to save it as a PNG. So you can do a screenshot of it and save it as a PNG, okay? So that's a quick way to convert. Then I have an object called W1 here. And what I want to do is I want to label it, okay? Um, so in order to put my photo, I want to put it on top of a label, okay? So a label is gonna be on my, uh, I'm sorry, the photo is gonna be on the label. And so here, and the label is gonna be on top of the root, okay? So think of it like different layers. So we start with the root, right? We're gonna, we have our, our image, we're gonna put it on top of the label. So we have to create a label. So here we're gonna make a label using the library and we're gonna put it on top of root and then we're gonna add the image on the label. So whatever the object for your image, you are gonna specify that there. And when we pack it, you can pack it to the left, the right. So you can make it um, align a certain way that you want. And in this case, I want it to, to be aligned right. And for this explanation, you know, you can put pretty much anything you want, but here I put this note that for TK Enter, it, for the GIF, right, it is gonna be supporting these formats only. But in realistic life, like let's say you, you took a picture of two cans and you want to put explanation, you wanna say this is the type of two can, right? Uh, Kill Bill or, you know, whatever type of birds or, you saw monkeys, so you can put like white face monkey. This is the text area that you wanna put in, okay? Then I have a, another object called W2. 
and this is going to be using a label. It's going to be on the root. And I'm going to justify it left. So I'm going to align it left. And here I'm going to pad it with size 10. And so normally we would have like picture and then text beneath or so in my case, I'm going to have text on the left and picture on the right. You see what I mean? So if you have your monkey picture, right, that's going to be on the right side, your text your explanation, you can say white face monkey or howling monkey or whatever, right? Uh, butterflies, etc. You can put that on the left. So in right here shows you how you can align it or justify it left. And that's gonna be, you know, explaining what that image is. So when you put an image online, unless it's very clear and obvious to the user, we don't have to put any kind of text on the label. But a lot of the times when you put it on the app, you have to tell the user, you know, what it is that they're looking at. Okay, so I'm going to run this. See how my explanation is here, right? Whatever that goes here in the triple quotation mark, that's going to show up here. Okay, you notice that how my GIF is not framing, it's not, you saw the image earlier, right? It's rotating. Sometimes it doesn't even show. So in, you know, my, the to troubleshoot that you might want to use another GIF because if the frame rate is too high, um, this program doesn't control the frame rate. So you, you might not be able to put animated GIF that has high frame rate. So, you know, like the GIF that you see that's moving very fast, right? So we didn't really, really just, we didn't specify like the type of frame rate. So as you see, my, my GIF becomes like a still GIF now, right? Or if it moves, it's very slow, okay? Because I didn't specify the frame rates. It's just like that. I do have a fix for the animated GIF and I will put it up. But if you do watch my other class video for 30A, I did explain on how to fix the, the exercise C, this one. Okay. Any questions? So now you can use this for your project, right? You can make, you can take your pictures that you took from Costa Rica. You can add a little bit of details, like, you know, if you want to do it on birds or animals or things that you saw in Costa Rica uh, for your project, that will be cool, right? Okay. So pretty easy. Any question? And project can be done with a partner or by yourself. You don't have to work with another person. If you do, that's going to be a little easier where you can divide up the parts that you're going to be doing and you can share ideas. Um, you don't have to stick with exactly what I require. You can make something that meets, but make sure that you meet the technical requirement. That's the rubric that I'm going to use to grade. Okay, so check out the rubric. All right, so that was part C. So the screenshot for that is there. Now we're gonna do a message box, okay? Um, now keep in mind that I'm giving you these exercises. This is like the cliff note of GUI development. So I'm giving you some of the common things that you can use. Um, there are a lot more things that you can add, of course, right? So we're gonna do the very basic because you know this can be a whole entire class. So I want, you know, there are a lot of really great example and tutorial online that you can also use. So in message box, um, we are gonna use the function from the library, okay? Now, some of the things that you need to know is it's, you know, these are the little pop-up windows that you see, like when you have an error or a warning, 
right? So when you visit or when you use an application, sometimes you see this, right? There would be something for just simply showing information. So it will show like a little eye warning with the, like the yellow exclamation point or something like that, an error, right? Sometimes if you want to ask the user questions, you can also use ask questions, ask to cancel, yes or no. These are some of the basic things that you can use with the message box, okay? All right, let's do part D. So we are going to use TK Enter. And I want to show you that you can use a wildcard if you're not sure. So in from the library, we're going to import wildcard. So that could be anything inside that, right? Um, or you can also import specific, right? If you're only using message box, you can just write from TK Enter import message box. If you're not sure, you can just import the whole library, but that might take up space in the system. So we want to be able to, you know, so I'm showing you how you can import both ways. We are gonna start with the root. So anytime you use TK Enter, begin with a root. That's gonna be what you have to set up. Then the dimension of your root or your window is gonna be 300 by 200. This is the size. Then we're going to add a label. Anytime that we add picture or text, we need to put it on a label. So I have a W object. This is a label. It's going on top of the root. And the text that's showing is going to be this. Displaying message to user. The font is going to be 50. And once I have that widget, I'm going to pack it. Okay. Then after that, I simply just use some of the built-in things from the library. I'm going to have it show information. And to show information, it's just going to say information. But if you want to have information about your company, right? Uh, let's say that it is a salon. You can say that, you know, this beauty salon or something like that, right? the best beauty salon in Fontana for Danny. <laughs> then for warning, right? You see this on like the security applications like antivirus, you see that all the time. Warning, you got like this many worms and this many virus, right? So this is how you can create it. So it's actually a message box and we can use the show warning function that's built into the library. And we should just tell it to say show warning and whatever text you want to display. Warning, right? You are running out of memory or something like that. <laughs> then error, we can display an error. So if, if you are making a game, you can also add all of these things like information, like instruction for them, how to start the game. Um, and then warning if they if they're going into the danger area. And then if they did something wrong, you can show an error. And we always, so the practice is that, you know, when the user click yes or no, right? It always reprompt because once that action goes, it changes the state, right? So what you want is you want confirmation when you design these type of prompts. Are you sure, right? If you click this, you know, this is gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so we want to ask them a question. And then we can ask them to cancel, right? If they want to cancel, do you wanna continue or cancel? And then we can ask them to click yes or no. So they have to choose one or the other option. I know that my thing might be misleading right here. Find the value, yes or no. But you can just say pick, yes or no, right? And then uh, for retry, so we can ask them to retry, try again. And then once we have all our message box that we want, we want to finish up our main object at the top. So we would do a main loop for root. 
So it's, you know, once you do it so many times, it's going to get really easy, right? It's pretty repetitive. Uh, you know, the concept is start with your root object, add your widgets to your root object, and then finish it up with the main loop for TK enter. Okay, so what it's doing at first is it's gonna do this message box information. So once I click okay, it's gonna show the next one and then the next one, the next one, the next one. So it won't show all at once because it is sequential. This is a sequential program. So it's gonna go top down. So it's gonna go one message box after the other, okay? Now, you don't want to do so many at once, right? Um, I do see some web application or website that has that. Usually those are, those are like the advertisement one, right? Um, but you can, uh, by practice, we shouldn't. It confuses the user, okay? So you notice that this is my main window, my root, right? It's two by 300. And then it shows this text. And right now I have the first message box. So once I click OK, it's going to go to the warning. Then I click OK again. It shows this. So it's using your OS's, right? Your OS's message box. Click OK. Then it says, are you sure? Now I can click yes or no. Then I click one button and says, want to continue? It's right here. Click OK, and then find a value, yes or no. Try again, I'm right here, click retry, and it's finished. Got all my message box. Pretty cool. Doesn't take very much. So if you only want one message box for your, for your project, right? like information, you can just do one, you know, add the root and then, or you can even do, just do one line message box, show info, but make sure you use TK enter. <laughs> but always practice with using root and then laying everything on top of it. Now on this, I have to close it now, right? Cause it's always going to be around. We can set it. We can also write it to where it's, it's going to self destroy. Right, once the user clicked this last one, right? So I would have to have an if statement here, right? If click yes, then it's gonna issue the command destroy. And it's gonna close. But I have to make sure that it listens to that event. So All right, any question? I think some of you are still working on this one. Okay, there's only like two more parts to go. So we should be finishing uh, assignment five today. That means that I will be here tomorrow and Thursday. Um, if you like, I can show you my version of my project, uh, like a really rough, rough draft. <laughs> like I would do a little demo. Um, I can code it really quick and show you, um, you know, like a snippet of it. 
but or if you want to work at home and on your project i will not require attendance tomorrow and thursday but if you have questions or need help you're welcome to stop by here i'll be here um our normal class time right if i don't see anyone by 7 30 then i'm probably gonna head out but if you show up at like 7 40 i'm gonna be here um but however if you plan to show up late let me know like you know if you plan to show up after 7 30 just drop me an email okay or a message on whatsapp that's fine too but email works best okay but i encourage you to work on your project at least even if it's not finished if it's you know not finesse if it's really rough that's fine turn it in i'll take a look at it i'll give you my feedback so that way you know you know what you can add to it so you can improve it I want you to have something tangible leaving this class outside of the memories from Costa Rica, even though we had a lot of fun, right? You want to have some kind of things, a learning outcome leaving this class, right? So. All right, so we can move on to the next one now, we're okay. All right. Let's go to the next part. Um, for part E, now we're gonna do check boxes. This is often when you see like things that have forms, um, you know, you have to select one or you can select multiple. So here I, I give you a little bit of information about how check buttons are used. So in TK Enter, this is called check button. And the check buttons. Um, you can have it with pick with colors. Um, you can have it with a certain size. Um, you can have it with foreground and background. Um, so that way, because the cursor is going to be where they're going to click. So that's going to be where the active portion of the, the, the buttons will be. And then we, we have to use some form of command. And remember that this is going to be the function for your actual hardware or your system, your computer to execute, right? The processor is seeing this command at the low level. So it's gonna execute that. It's gonna, you know, um, listen for your mouse or your keyboard and so on. Okay, so these are some of the options that you can implement with check buttons. It goes on forever, right? The feature that you can add to it. And then these are some of the functions that you can use with it sometime that you can make it flash, right? Across multiple colors, you can do like blue green or blue red. Um, you can have it deselected, toggle, et cetera, okay? All right, so let's look at the code for E. This is a little longer, slightly. Let me close this, my shell. And let me move this, okay. Um, so, I start at the top, like always, with an import statement. And in this case, I'm using a wildcard. So from TK Enter, import asterisk, which is a wildcard, right? You can also do import TK Enter from TK, or um, we can say import TK Enter as TK, right? There are many ways to write an import statement. We would start with the root object, like before. This is going to be 300 by 200 as the physical size on screen. We're gonna make a label. This is gonna contain our text, like what we've done before. Student options for courses. So I'm making, right, like a scheduling program interface here. And the font is gonna be 50. And you can play with the font. You can also put in the, this is the default font type. So, if you want, you can also configure, uh, specify what type of font you want to use, okay? And then after we have that widget, we're going to pack the label. And here I have three buttons. So in design, you don't want so many check, box, check buttons, okay? Because it will get really confusing and people tend to click the wrong one. So maximum, I would say five, but most of the time you will see that ideally in practice, we would have three, okay? 
So when you see like those Google form online, right? The options that you add, okay? Like for surveys and multiple choice and stuff like that, those are your check boxes. So here I have three. I want to label them differently. So I I, clar I declare button one, check button two, check button three. And I would use int var. Okay, this is the function that comes from the library. And then here is the configuration for each of the buttons. So button one, it is going to be check button. And it's going to be on top of your root. And for the option one, I want to display online as a class online, right? And the variable for this button, it's going to come on from this. So check button one. Now we want to have an on off value. Like if they click it, it's going to be one. If they uncheck it, it's going to be zero, right? So if these are the bool values and this is the size of my button two by 10, small, okay? Then for the button two, similarly, you're gonna see check button. It's on top of root. This option is for on-site class. So that will be the text that I wanna show. Okay, variable. So on and off, and then the size. So you want it to be consistent in the, say, the same size, right? We don't want one to be smaller than the other because if you make the larger one, people will tend to click the larger one, right? Because it's more, it's more visible. So we want to make sure that it's consistent in size. And then the third option is hybrid. So button three, check buttons on top of root. Our text is going to be hybrid for the third option. And then my variable for this one is going to be from here. And then on value, off value is going to be zero, the size. And then we're going to pack it. So in this case, I pack all three in one shot, right? I could do, you know, button one pack, button two pack, button three pack. It, it's all the same, or we can do it at the end like this. And then I have a main loop. I can also say root dot main loop. Oops, sorry. Now, we see how this code is, right? But when I check this, it's only going to check it for me. It doesn't do anything else after that, right? So if you want for the user to select online or on-site or hybrid and then display that, right? So if I check this and then there will be another button to submit, right? So it's missing that. So ideally for a form like this, I would have another button here, click submit. So once I click submit, it pops up another windows and it's gonna say you selected online class, something like that to confirm with the user, okay? So you have to think about the process on what happens when the user selects certain things and then what happens after that, okay? So we're missing, a component here and then the, the action after that. Okay, so consider that for your project, but this is only like a portion that can go into your project, right? So you can have the user pick like, do you want to see birds, mammals, trees? <laughs> and then they would check the option and then pop up another window and show pictures of the birds that you took or, you know, monkeys or, I don't know, what else did we see? We didn't see a lot of mammals. <laughs> or iguanas, Danny's favorite. <laughs> so I would have to have an if statement, right? If, right, the user selected this 
this button, button one, right? Or if the user clicks submit, take whatever that's selected. So it have to store it into a variable or a list and then show it, display it, okay? So you kind of have to think about the process and then lay it out in English and then you can write it in code and it should be simple logic after that. And if you get stuck, you don't know how, you know, try to do your best with what you have. That's okay too. But I want to challenge you to see, you know, if you make your own application for your business or for yourself, how would you do that? Okay. So this wraps up TK Enter. Next, I'm going to show you GUI Zero, which is more of my favorite um, library to use. But this one, is it comes with Python, uh, very easy to use. Okay. So for the next one, what we're going to do is we are going to install GUI Zero. So if you weren't here yesterday, I think we talked a little bit about this or before. Um, anytime that you use library that is external, you can bring it in um, by either using command line or in Tani, you would click on tools and then you would do manage package like this. And then you are going to search for GUI, GUI zero, like this. And you're gonna see this here. You're gonna click it and you should have an install button. It takes a few minutes to install. So it's gonna automatically download from Git and then it's gonna install it. It's gonna add it to your Python package. So it's going to be with Python, so that way it can build. If you're using Visual Studio Code, right, you can do the same thing. You can add the package, just search for it, and then click Install. All IDE has that option. So that means that we're linking that package to our programming language package. So GUI Zero module is pretty cool. It allows you to um, make interface. I have a question. Yeah. So I click on tools, go to manage package at the top. And here in the search option, I type in the name of my module, GUI Zero. That's the library we're gonna use. Press enter and then click on the link for that module. Okay, so this is the module that we're gonna use for the next one. And notice the author, she's a female, right? There are many developers that create really cool things that are female. And <laughs> so there are really good tutorials that they have for this too. This works on Raspberry Pi perfectly. It's a light module. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can use GUI Zero. So this is going to be part F. Okay, so install the, the module. Any other question before we start part F? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are going to um, use Tawny, just like what we did before. There's also a link for your documentation for GUI Zero, right? If you hit control and click it, it's take you to their GitHub. So it shows you how you can do the install. You can also download it from the zip. You don't need to do all of this. We already did it in the IDE. You can also use pip in command line. On Mac OS, this is how you install it if you don't use the IDE and so on. So there are also like instruction on how to use it, how to install it and, and et cetera. 
Okay. I copy and paste the code in here. So you can just make sure you check the symbol. Sometimes quotation marks and things don't interpret correctly from Word into your IDE. So what we're going to do is after we install, we are going to write these three lines. Okay. We are going to say from GUI zero import app. This is a super class that's written in the library. And with that, we are going to make an object called app. You can call your object anything you want. I like to use simple names like this. So I remember, but you can say A1 or whatever, right? So I have an object called APP and it uses the app class. So it's gonna, we're gonna, just like how we had the root in the other one, we want to have something to lay everything on top, right? Everything is a layer. So we want to start with an object and on it, we're gonna have a title called Welcome Friends. And like TK Enter, how we pack on this one, at, when you use GUI zero, you use display method, okay? So just like how you use the pack on the other one here, you are going to show the object by using the object and its method display. Okay, so this is now our window, right? And it has the title on top, welcome friends. So it achieves the same thing on the other one, right? Instead of the TK, you can modify it as with the title. So it does the same thing. It's just different function that they wrote in the library to execute that. Okay. Okay, so that was the first few steps for part F. So after the three lines, file, save as, run, Right, we can screenshot for our assignment submission. Don't forget, whenever you run the program, screenshot. Okay, so here, once I have those three lines, I am at step three, right? Then next, I'm gonna add the text widget. I'm gonna do step four. Right, so after, before the app display, after the app object, you're gonna add your next few lines here, right? You are gonna add the GUI widget code there, okay? You don't wanna add it after this because what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull up the window and then it's gonna open this. So you want it to be sequentially. Your widget is part of the app. So you want it to be before the display. Okay, so that's, so this is the code and it has to go before the display, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this line right here under the app. See that? Under the app, I'm gonna add this line. I added the comment. So we're gonna add a text widget to the app window. So I did this in stages so you can see, okay? So I add this part. So from the, the three lines that you had before, what I'm gonna do is I am going to add this line, welcome message. And so this is an object for the text widget. It is text and it goes onto the app, just like what we've seen in the other library, right? And then your text is gonna be welcome to my app. Very similar to TK Enter. And then I just simply display the first object. So when I run this, right, it's gonna run everything together. So I have welcome to my app, which is this part and my title, which I started with. So as you go, you're just gonna add a few lines and a few lines and you're gonna run to test your program. So you're gonna see, okay? So by the end, you're gonna have a longer set of code with your complete GUI. So I'm at step four. So 
So you can say Costa Rica trip, right? And then my time in Costa Rica. Then we can add some pictures. Uh, we can add some text. Then we can add some button that leads to, you know, maybe another window that adds some more text and pictures, stuff like that. <laughs> Now, since I didn't really uh, configure the size of this, this is the default size, right? For my window, right? For my app, okay? If you want it larger or smaller, make sure that you, you specify the, the size just like how you've done in the TK Enter. We'll see shortly. Okay, after this, right? What we're gonna do is we are going to Modify, okay, I'm gonna modify my, my welcome message. I'm gonna make it a larger font and a larger size or a different font and a larger font, okay? So you're gonna modify the welcome message line that you had by adding in the size, the font, and the color. And you can use any color you like, pink, I don't know, um, something that's easy to see. We talked about contrast earlier. Okay, so this is stage three. Did I do? Well, maybe I didn't do that part here. Let me fix it. I'm gonna do just a blue. The light blue is kind of hard to see on gray. Let's try again. Yeah, that's better. So you can choose some color that you like. As long as it's visible, that's good. Now this is the font uh, 40, okay? And then after that, I'm gonna add in my text box, which is what you see here. So text box is designed for the user to enter some kind of value, right? Like, you know how we've been doing everything in console, like what is your name? Um, what is your age? Enter your grades, enter your course, right? That needs to go into the text box, but also we need to have a label for it, right? So you have a text box, you gotta have a label for it, okay? So here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in, let me double check my step so I don't skip ahead of you. Yeah, so we're gonna add in a text box called my name. And so I would add in a text box. So after the welcome message, add another line called my name. And this is gonna be the text box and it's on top of the app. And then I only, I don't need to pack it. The cool thing about Vui Zero though, is you don't have to pack each widget, right? On this, you just have to display the main, the main root object. So we would just have one display. So you just keep adding your widget and then in, on top of your main, your main loop here or your main object. Okay, so I have a text box. And with that, it's going to look like this. Now we can also size our text box to be larger or smaller. So things for like password and username, you want it to be a little bit bigger um, to contain like, I don't know, at least eight characters. Some people would require at least now 15 characters. So you can put in the dimension for it if you need. So we would, we would specify the size, the height and the width. So after I have the text box, I'm gonna add in the buttons, but be careful, right? I forgot to mention to you that I added these things at the top, 
right? So when you add the text box or the text, you need to add text for this, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna throw an error. For text box, you're gonna add this. Now, to really avoid doing all of the addition, you can also just say import GUI zero, but here we are importing individual things. So make sure that you add these things at the top as well. And on the instruction, I pointed the arrow to the import statement. So when we added the app at the top, we had this. When we added the text, make sure you add this. And then when you added the text box, make sure you add this. So add your component or your classes from the library at the top in your import statement as you are using the methods from that class in your code. Okay. Now, once you have the text box, we're going to add the button. So we're going to add a push button. And with that, we are going to have a push button widget. So unlike TK Enter, that TK Enter just use button. Here, this one, it's they call it push button. Okay, so the next one. Uh, let, hold on one second. Let me modify this to make sure that I'm the same with you guys. Because sometimes I forget to add things. That was four. No, that was three. Here's my four. Okay. So for my button, I have the update text. And this is a push button. It's on top of my app. The command is say my name and the text to display my name. Okay, so how does it look? So this is where I'm going to type my name. And when I click this button, it's going to show my name. There you go, it worked. So you type your name in there and click the button and it should show, instead of the welcome message, it modify that to your name. After you add the push button, that should work. Make sure that we check our import statement at the top to make sure we have all of those components from the classes there. And then we would have these things before the display. So if you want to make this for like to search for, I don't know, for your project to search for birds or uh, monkeys or toucans, right? You can have a button and then you can say, you're currently searching for this bird and then you can have a picture of the bird. There you go, there's your project. Any questions? Okay, almost done. We just have a few more things to do. All right. So what step am I at? I am, I just finished a push button from step 11. Then now you are gonna do a slider. So the slider widget allows you to go right, left, top, down, right? So on this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a slider to change the size of our font, okay? To make it larger and smaller. So after the push button, right? Make sure that we add slider at the top and then we are going to add in this line, okay? Text size slider, right? After the push button. 
So it should look like this. So I'm just going to add this line and add the slider at the top. So slider from the library. And with that, I have text size. And I'm using that object to create my slider. It goes on top of my root app, uh, the app window. And then the command, it's going to change the text size. This command has to be typed exactly like this because it's a command that's pulled from the library for the slider. What that does is going to increase and decrease the, the font of your text, right? Like your name. And it's going to go from 10 to 80. So it's going to go from the smallest is 10. So when you slide it down, it's going to decrease the font. When you slide it up, it's going to show the increase of the font 80. Okay, so I type in my name. I could display my name. I slide. I slide like that. Fun. Okay, so the only line we add after the push button is the slider and we added the slider um, class from the module. That's how we're able to use it. So you can say from the module import specific classes, see? Okay. So when you test it, it should look like this. And if you like other color, like I said, you can also change it to the color of your choice. Most of the basic color, it should match it, right? Um, sometime when you use like a certain shade of blue, right? Sometimes that, you know, it won't be in, in, in just like, define as text like that. You have to use like numerical values. Okay, so what did we do? We did step 12 and 13. Now we're gonna add a picture, okay? So make sure that your file is gonna be in the same location as your Python file. That's a practice for all programming right? Web server. So unless you specify the path of your file, but to save the trouble, make sure that you save your picture where you save your Python file. That minimizes the problem, okay? Because if it doesn't find the picture, possibly it's either the picture is not named correctly in the code, or the picture is saved in the wrong location, or your GIF image is high frame, right? Like what I said. So preferably find something that's not animated. Okay. I think you can try JPEG on this. Let me read their documentation again, but use a lot of these libraries support GIF. So GIF is easy or PNG. PNG, like I said before, you can take your JPEG and convert it by doing a screenshot, especially on Windows that works really well or you can just save the file as PNG or use an app uh, to convert the image. So on the next, when we add the picture, we add another line. Don't forget to add picture class at the top, okay? You're gonna add picture class at the top and then before the app display, add my pic, this line. And then whatever the file that you use. So when I go on Google, let's say that I found a picture I wanna, that's a GIF, I save it, right? Make sure it is exactly the name and the extension. It, it should be a GIF, okay? So how do I do that, right? For those of you who don't know, 
right? I simply go on Google. So let's say um, I want to look for monkey. And then I can say, you know, if I want to find dot gif like this, because sometimes it gives. So I can find a picture, right, that I can use. Now, if you truly want to do this legally, we can have it, you know, where you can um, you can make sure that the license is for common license. So creative common and means that like, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna sue you if you use their picture. See how it's a lot less, okay? Like this one. So let me put it in my code. Oh, it is. I'm gonna try um, the JPEG and I'll let you know if it works. Sometimes if the picture is too large for its size, sometimes it doesn't also load it. So let me see. Oh, see? This is a J5. It might not support this. So I'm going to go with my original and I'll play with that and I'll let you know. Okay. So now um, we are going to run our next code. Is it five, six? So this one does well with the animation, see? So I added, right, what did I do for this one? I added the picture class, I added this. Make sure that your picture is exactly the same name as how you save it. And it works with .gif very well. So we wish we should use .gif. If you use an animated one, that should be okay. I think there's also converter for your video, right? To into GIF. So if you guys make your little cool GIF video, you can also save it and you can use it for your project. So that was the image. Any questions? You guys okay with that one? Now we're gonna do a combo widget. This is a drop down menu that you can allow the user to select. So on um, on your code, we need to add combo at the top for the import statement. We are going to add the combo section, which are these right here, okay? You can also copy and paste this over to your code or you can type it. Seven. So I added combo top, don't forget. And then um, your code is on your assignment. So in case I don't get to show you all of it. So I would have the user choice. This is gonna store the combo. It's going on top of the app. Your option is one, two, three. So normally we would show like, you know, the type of option, especially for your business. So if we are doing a car wash business, we can say, you know, uh, regular wash, supreme wash, um, you know, I don't know, gold package wash for all the extra things that they, they give you in the car wash. 
And then you can use it to align left or right. So in, in this case, I'm using left and the grid. This is for the dimension and, the, and how it's going to be aligned. And then you want the description with text for the display because if you have a drop down menu and you don't tell the user what that is, they're not going to know what it is to pick. So we want to say select a certain option. So if you do a car wash business, you can say select the car wash that you want to make an appointment for, right? Uh, you know, these are the type of wash, silver wash, gold wash, I don't know, a supreme wash. And so those are the options that you want to specify. So these two things go on the next part before the display. And at, that's for the combo. Don't forget to add combo at the top here. And so what you can see from this is I have the drop down option right there. Now, like I said from before, when you select this option, it doesn't mean anything because we didn't really make it mean anything. So, you know, for example, if I'm doing it for my project, I would say, you know, select a city, let's say La Fortuna and show the picture from La Fortuna, then I can, I can choose select, you know, the click on the city and then I would display the picture. So pop up another window and then display like all the four or five pictures that you took in La Fortuna. So you can do it that way. Okay. Now you can also align in the middle, right? Are you guys doing any problem? So now when you when you program GUI and you turn in your project, it hits a lot of areas. Number one, it already has variable and object. Two, right, you're using module. Right, you can make your own custom module if you like um, to import it in. That's fine. If you want to be creative, you, you can do that, right? But you know, simple things like this, you can also, you know, so you can take what we did today, modify it a little bit. Think about like if you are a user, what do you want to get out of the things that you create in your project, right? Like what do they want to see? Um, it has to make sense in some way. Okay. So we want to be able to show. So if you're doing like a search type of, of project, right? That really narrows down to how, you know, we can search through the picture. We can search for some information about certain type of animal that, that we found, um, that we saw in Costa Rica and so on, okay? So it meant a lot of like the technical area, but also you want to make sure that it works seamlessly and then also create functions and things for it, okay? So, and then lastly, we are gonna do a checkbox now using GUI zero. So after the combo, you're gonna add the checkbox in your import statement and then simply add the checkbox option, okay? So we already did the combo. So we just need to add this, the accept section. So that's going to be the line that you need to add for the checkbox. And then we're going to do a button group and that should take care of it. So I added checkbox from my import statement. Then I go down and I added one more line, accept checkbox put it on top of the ad app. And then I want to specify some type of instruction for those checkbox. Click to accept the terms and the condition. You often see this when you do like um, user uh, license agreement, the ULA, or, you know, some kind of, you know, agreement, right? Or if you want to do multiple checkbox, like what we've seen before in the last example, 
So in this one, I'm only doing one checkbox and it's gonna be on the left side. And this value, you notice that it's one, one, because if I put zero, one, it's gonna overlay this. So I want to, because it's a grid. So on your app, it is a, like a square, right? It actually has these grid and cell. So we want to make sure that it's gonna be below the other, the other combo box. Okay, you don't want it to be on top of it. So this is why we want to specify one one here. Okay, you can play with this a little bit to see how you want to position it. Okay. So I'm sorry, it's next right here. Now, like I said, it doesn't, when I click it, it doesn't do anything, right? We have to tell it to do something. If I click it, it might, we want to show a label so we can also add a label. If click, right, we would do a command and to call the next. So you can say command equal and then call the next, the next object that is a label. So that's a checkbox. So this is a one, one. And then you can play with the grid to see how you want to position it. So anytime you make a widget in GUI zero, make sure that you import in the class if you haven't done that with all the module. Um, from GUI zero, if you import in the entire module, then you don't have to do individual ones. But if you import in like this, you gotta specify each of the class and you would use that class and its method to be able to define your object for your widget. And we want to add one thing at a time to test it, right? and then simply just display our root object, which is our app, in this case, by using the display method. And then next we are gonna do button group. This is your little round button. Those are called radio buttons, right? Um, when you're using Google Form and you select the options, they give you these. So that is your button group. So when we add the button group, your import statement needs to have that class button group. And then we simply add another line. Okay. This is the line. Pick choice. And we're going to go, we're going to add this section. So lastly, this is, so I added button group to my import statement at the top. And then I, after my checkbox widget, right? That was the last step right here. After accept, I would go ahead and add in my pick choice. So in your radio button, just similar to what you see with the checkboxes that we did in the last one, we are going to have it laid on top of the app. And you want to specify the options. Here I have first for option one, second for option two, third for option three, okay? And um, by default, I want it to always select option one. So you want to specify a default selection. And then I want it to make it all horizontal. You can have it vertical however you want to lay it out. And then I want it to go after the checkbox that I did last. So it's going to be on grid one, two, and I want it aligned left, okay? So, sorry guys, I'm going to have to expand it so you can see, this is the full screen. So see how the default selection is first, right? So you should have a default selection because 
And then there should be a submit option somewhere here, right? But I wanna show you that you can do that. Now I can also have it gridded a little differently, but this is gonna drop down and cover. So we have to consider how this is gonna be laid out on our, our main window. And that's your code. So the entire thing that we did is at the end, okay? All everything. I actually have a push button, I think. Yeah, so I added, if you look at the last, last code, if you, if you add the last part, which is another push button. Copy this. And then I added info. What did I do with this one? Sorry, let me double check. Oh yeah, so I added a submit button. And that's gonna be info. So you add info at the top and then submit button. So here's my GUI zero test. So I, you added info at the top, this is the last step. And then you are going to add the last line, which is the submission. And this is the push button. The command is to submit form, and then it's going to display form submitted, and your grid is going to be two, one, one by three, and it's going to be left. So you have to expand this to really see. There's my submit form. There you go. It worked. <laughs> Okay, so what did I do on the last part? I added info at the top next to my, my button group that I did last. Okay, this was the last step. This is the current step. Then I went down to before app display. I add another line called submission. And this is in your instruction. That's the last part. Push button. And for that, it's going to submit the form. As it's submitted, it's going to pop up a little window, a little prompt saying form submitted. Like this. Oh, sorry. And voila, we did a lot of widgets today in two libraries. <laughs> So graphical user interface is a lot, right? It could be, and these are some of the basic things that you normally use, but there are a lot more that we can add. Um, we didn't have, and you see how gliders are added. You can add, you know, vertical gliders. You can add um, other things that make sense to your application. So only add things that are usable to your application. I've seen some stuff on web app that is just extras, right? You don't want extras because that creates security issues and you know just more work um, to maintain it over time. So we want to just things, simple things that's easy to see, that's easy to use, that is functional. Um, and then think about how you can implement these widgets and GUI components into your project. I already give you the very basics, so you can just quickly whip up something about your trip or something that you've learned in Costa Rica, um, or you can stick to the original requirement where you can do a search or you can, you know, so your project should be related to your trip and what you've learned. Um, you can also use data and graph. Um, we, we did that yesterday. So you, I show you how to really visualize your data at the very basic level, of course. Um, so there are many things that you can implement, but when we do the project, make sure that you take a look at your, um, 
your technical requirement, right? That's what I'm gonna use as my rubric to grade. So for part two, this is your Python file. Okay, let's take a look at these, okay? So if you did really, you are gonna ha already have objects, right? Um, because you're using a library. Um, so you're gonna hit the 20 points. You also make sure that we add comments in our program in not every line, but some section, right? Like, you know, this is for my buttons. This is, you know, to do this. Um, and then if you, you know, if you don't, you if you don't make a custom module that will be a 20 point seductive, you can have your own module. And we talked about um, using module, how to import module. Okay, we did that before Costa Rica. And the, the videos is up. So if you want to go back and look, you need to implement some functions. So you just need to do some depth, like what we've seen in the first exercise, right? For TK Enter, we did some function there. So you have variables. So you met the majority of this exception for this one, uh, for the module and, you know, and then the loop, okay? So think about how you can implement some loops to access the pictures or to, you know, so think about how you can use a for loop or a while loop or for exception handling. Okay, part one. I just want a very simple description on your project. Okay. So you can download this that guide documentation. Okay. Like this. And basically answer these questions. What problems are you solving in this project? So every software we design, every application has a purpose. And that purpose is to solve problems. It could simply be entertainment right like to 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 help the user remember more most of the games that you see like word games that helps memory um solutions that you implement for the project what kind of things that you add to this project to to, to make make it you know solvable um explanation of your algorithm how did you do that right do your best in answering these if you just want to put together like a little memoir application about your Costa Rica trip that you learned, that's fine. That's a way for, you can use the application to share it with other people so they can learn about Costa Rica and that's also important, okay? So put together, answer these questions, you can submit it. Um, a pseudocode is just a step-by-step, -step, start with step one, start up your program and go through, and basically it's an outline of your program, okay? I put some link on the page on how to do pseudocode. Um, now for you guys, I might not be too picky in how you do pseudocode, but think about how your program flow from the beginning to end and do your best in listing those steps. List everything, including functions and loops, right? So it helps you outline how your program is gonna go. My computer science class, I'm very picky with this, right? Like I read through and I would tell them, the whole point in it is for me to give you feedback on what you can improve in the future in case you take coding again. Or if you apply for a job and you say, hey, I know Python, but you gotta make sure that you, you come with the knowledge, right? So part one, part three, Okay, so fill out this form. If you're working with another person, be honest when you give them the grade, right? But don't use it to like, you know, trying to sabotage them or just be honest, okay? And then the more comment you put in there, I do read these, okay? When I grade project, it takes me a while to grade my project, but I do submit things online as I have deadlines. Now, if you are familiar with GitHub, you can use GitHub. This is for a lot of the, the developer, programmers, computer science students, I require that they use GitHub. It's a good, basically it's an online portfolio 
repository for your code. And this is where you can pull a lot of the open source code. But if you're not familiar with GitHub, use Google Sites. I love Google Sites, okay? I'm gonna show you like one of my students, he shared this with me, right? So this is his project. Like he just added some picture on his project. This is for my CIS 11 class, right? And a link to his GitHub. So you, and all basically you can add text box, it's drag and drop and you can edit. And there's like, you can add pages and things to it. So my suggestion for you, okay? Online portfolio is really good, especially you're applying for jobs. It's a good way for you to link it to your LinkedIn and also your resume. It's a good way for you to market yourself and Google site is free. It's like a free web page, right? Um, you can add things like your resume and every project that you do add a page, okay? So I can add a page. Um, so right now I have a home page. So I just click insert. And then I can add images. I can link it to my drive. Um, you can scroll down and you can choose more options. You can add a video. You can add a lot of different things. So if you did a tutorial video on makeup and you are trying to do something with your portfolio online, you can add it to your website like this, okay? And Google doesn't charge you anything unless you have major storage requirement, then you just pay for the Google Drive option. And it's linked to your Google Drive. So once I finish, right, I click publish. Otherwise, when you tell me, oh, Dr. Wynn, go to this link to show, to see my, I, when I click it and I won't see it. So you have to make sure that you make it public. Okay, so click publish. Okay. So to submit, screenshot of your evaluation and a link to your portfolio. I don't care if it has one picture or 25 pictures on there, okay? Or a picture of your code for your project, picture of two pants, I don't care, right? It has to have something, okay? So when you submit, upload a document that has a screenshot and the link, that's the easiest way, okay? That's all I need. And that's automatically 50 points, okay? I'm not going to judge you based on how pretty or heavy or light content your portfolio is. The whole point for you is to start a portfolio. All universities require portfolios now, um, but it's always good for you to know how to market yourself, your skill, and you know the things that you know, and to learn how to, to put it online. Okay? I know you guys have social media. You're good at it, so this should be a piece of cake. Okay. All right, any questions? Okay, so today is the last official day. And sorry, I didn't get you pizza today because I didn't realize that it's going to be the last session. I, I expect it might go until tomorrow. I will be here tomorrow um, in case you need help with your project, right? Come with ideas, okay? Because when you come in, you you know, we can talk about what you can do with your project if you're not sure and how to start. But, or if you want to work from home, I'm, I, I answer my email. Um, I usually kind of work on stuff late. So, um, and if I don't get to it, I'll answer you tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to stop recording for attendance now. Let me know if you have questions.